strange. I've had needles all my years of life and uh, still I'm still scared of needles. I've lived with sickle cell all my life. Sickle cell disease is an inherited genetic disorder that affects people from birth. They usually start developing symptoms when they are six months of age. The commonest symptoms of which are pain and also propensity to catching serious infections. Patients who are affected have red cells that are sickle-shaped when they are deoxygenated. And this comes from the abnormal solubility of their abnormal hemoglobin. Sickle cell disease affects certain ethnic groups more frequently. The commonest are in Africa and also in people of Afro-Caribbean and Afro-American descent. It is a serious debilitating illness which requires lifelong treatment and a lot of support. Hi, Hi I'm here for my treatment. A sickle cell disease pain crisis is undescribable. They ask you what's your pain level, 10 out of 10. You go 12. It takes your breath, it takes everything. Pain keeps traveling all over your body. It's like something is pressing your heart down and your bones. I could be talking to you and then I could go straight into crisis, just that minute. You live every day not knowing what's gonna happen. The disease will always keep showing its face unless steps are taken to, to modify it. A patient with sickle cell disease will always feel tired and there's always the threat that a painful crisis might come out of the blue. People lose their confidence, sometimes they are unable to attend school and some people find it difficult to maintain stable employment. As a young child, it was really hard. I really didn't have a lot of friends. I'm the third child of five from my family, but the only one with sickle cell. It means my parents had to dedicate their life looking after me. I gave up on relationship at some point, to be honest. By the time people find out that you have sickle cell, you just realize that they don't pick your calls anymore. But when my husband came along, there was something unique about him. <laughs> we met at a bus stop about four to five months into our friendship. I told Abby I had sickle cell. When Bola did tell me that she suffered from sickle cell, I imagined that it was just something that could be easily treated or something that could be cured. But she insisted that I met with a sickle cell counsellor and that really enlightened me on the impact uh, on sufferers and the families. I was like, this guy does not know what he's getting himself into. He still went ahead. He still wanted to marry me and he has been my rock. Growing up in Nigeria, the treatment I could have then was just blood transfusion and painkillers. That was it. Moving over to the United Kingdom, I was able to access more treatment. Three years ago, I was close to, to dying. I had a serious chest infection. It was pneumonia. I was in ICU. Nothing was working for me again, nothing. And my consultant decided that, okay, Bola, we tried everything. I'm going to put you through exchange blood transfusion. And I remember we just started to see the difference. Automated exchange is offered for patients who have had strokes before, who've had recurrent chest syndromes before, and anybody else who's not doing too well on whatever treatment we're giving them. The automated exchanges are important because they give patients a much better quality of life. Some patients have been completely free of hospital admission since starting on the exchange transfusion program, which is a huge achievement. Sharp scratch. Keep still for me. She's got a tricky vein there. <laughs> The machine is able to separate what the doctors want to go in, what they don't want to go in. The treatment tends to last for about four to five hours, but after that, when everything is mixed up in my system, I'm good to go. Hospital used to be my second home without the mortgage. <laughs> but now I don't have crisis. I have more energy. I'm here for my husband and my children. My parents look at me today and I just say, joy. This has been life-changing for her. 
ever since we started this, uh, just over three years ago. She hasn't been to hospital admitted acutely since, which is a huge achievement, and she's been able to get on with her life and get on with her children. She's more healthy. She's, she's got more energy. The machine and, and all the support, the technology is great, but the blood, it's quite important. Black sickle cell patients have got a very different blood groups to those of the white population who tend to be the majority of donors. So we're looking for ethnically matched donors to donate as much as possible. This is why we're campaigning, this is why we're pushing for more black people to give blood to support people with sickle cell disease. Having children, having my husband, I'm able to do what I love doing. My life has greatly improved.